Hello. This is Dr. Anatol walking in cold, cold, cold western New York. And uh, in the last few days I got uh, a lot of questions, a lot of, uh, what's the word, semi-conscious queries about what to do with this situation. The virus, the economy, well, I'm certainly not a prophet, but I can give you a few ideas that have been rolling in my head recently and maybe respond to one to a few of your um, concerns. So nothing I'm going to say is really particularly new, but uh, I guess hearing from me, uh, it will be, it will have a, a different impact. So, a couple things. First of all, this virus uh, is real, and it is a real danger. Uh, how much of a danger it is? We have some idea, we do not have full idea. So, we all know what kind of precautions we should take. Second thing, uh, because of all the social distancing and stuff, particularly young people uh, will become socially isolated. And that kind of uh, situation tends to grow on you in a, in a, in a kind of uh, bad way, usually slowly. And the way to counteract that um, is not by what a lot of people did with me, is trying to get uh, psychotherapy without license, counseling and life coaching by texting. Uh, texting is a very good way to communicate small talk and small things about when are you, when are you arriving, are you okay, is dinner ready? But for emotional support, for being friends, texting is just, it's very low uh, standard. Much better is to use a phone call and even better uh, to do video uh, conferencing, video calling. I was uh, reminded that uh, our dear friend Bill Gates used to date his wife um, that was a, quite a while ago. They used to watch the same movie in a movie theater and then discuss it uh, over the phone, um, each eating a cake or whatever, uh, because they were in different places and uh, they couldn't have a quote-unquote real date. So they did the best thing um, that, that was possible under the circumstances. The same thing for you guys is that particularly young people who think they can use technology, you should be on a Zoom call with your friends all the time, not texting, but actually having a, a real meetings um, via one of those media. Zoom is the easiest probably, uh, but there's, well, just about anything. There's offerings from Microsoft, from Google, from Schmugel, from anyone, and um, basically have a, a, a real um, hangout. I mean, actually, you know, have a cup of tea at your home each, and then talk to each other. Is it ideal? Well, of course not. Is it better than nothing? Yes. Is it better than texting? God, yes, way better than texting. If you can't do video calls, you can do phone conferencing. And I can tell you as, as a person who have been having multiple conversation friendships that are non-local, I mean, I don't really have any good friends uh, in the town where I live. It's a separate issue altogether, but you know, all my friends, the deepest friends, friends who I really, really value, are at the end of a a uh, Zoom call or Signal call or one of those, you know, WhatsApp calls. 
sometimes video sometimes not sometimes if I need to see how the person is feeling see his or her face then you know you do a, a video call it's always preferred to do a video call if you can uh, can do it second thing is about the economy and generally the the worry that uh, fear of the unknown always brings with it um, we're on the verge of uh, pretty serious uh, you know changes in the economy what kind of changes well we have some idea uh, probably there will be a lot more people doing remote work the, the social isolation um, that I've been talking about a little bit is going to continue our use of these uh, in a video conferencing uh, ways to communicate is going to increase um, it, it's going to change the kind of work people do and the kind of work that is popular etc and uh, that by itself is something that should make people who are trying to be independent financially should make them nervous uh, also um, this epidemic seems to be as bad as epidemic 100 years ago and um, it's probably going to lead to um, social changes, political changes, spiritual changes, a lot of questioning and uh, you know I wish I could tell you how it's going to go but again I'm not a prophet and frankly I try my best to live my life in the present moment not knowing what's going to happen in the future. It's uh, more I guess it's more interesting that way, um, certainly involves a lot less thinking about the future that I cannot control anyway. So all of that um, brings me to probably the most important point is that generally uh, suffering changes are very good times for spiritual practices, for meditation. So we have a lot of alone time nowadays and uh, it's by itself is a very good time to sit down on your rear end and to meditate. It's a good time to, well, to spend time alone and question, you know, what is the meaning of life is for you? Uh, what is uh, important for you in your life? In any case, this whole change thing makes you question what is important for you and what is not important for you. Uh, and, uh, you know, as, as usual, this is real and reality is much better at uh, telling you what is important for you than thinking about it, even though contemplation um, is definitely a tool in uh, figuring things out. So um, this is going to bring and has already br brought questions uh, similar to questions uh, you know after the second world war for people like me why so many people got killed what was the role of God in this and uh, you know if we look at uh, this uh, this idiotic idea that God somehow needs to help human beings uh, well it's a it's a it's a dogmatic idea from a very particular religion or particular set of religions and uh, uh, Again, understanding how God, quote-unquote, functions uh, is not uh, something that can be understood intellectually. It's not something that one can arrive at by thinking. So that's why all the intellectual means like you know, reading scriptures, repeating words, uh, uh, repeating uh, dead uh, mantras, um, these only help you with concentration and human mind is very powerful so thoughts words that are directed at a certain goal they certainly work but what does that God has to do with that that's a very good question do I know the answer to this question I well whether I do or not I'm not gonna tell you so so this is the time when a lot of maturation can happen. This is the time when a lot of people can get scared into becoming stuck 
um, because they'll get hurt or because they do not have the facility to deal with problems of this magnitude uh, what can we do? Well, we have to do what the best we can do. What else can we do? We can ask for help. We can sit on our rear end and uh, meditate. We can learn about the nature of thought through meditation and through observation. We can finally ask a question, who are we? Who am I? Uh, are we the stream of thoughts? Or are we something deeper or something different? Are we a story attached to our name? Or are we something that is beyond storytelling, beyond ideologies, beyond words? Uh, is it going to be easy? I doubt it. But what are you going to do when you are between a rock and a hard place? And that's where we are right now as a society. Some people more, some people less. But uh, humanity has faced problems that were bigger and, and worse than those, than this one. And uh, we will survive somehow or another. I haven't even started talking about the ecology, the, the climate change and issues like that. I want to say a few more words about the idea that God is supposed to help human beings. It's a very human-centered invention to say that God is there at our service. Maybe he is, maybe he is not. Maybe she is, maybe she is not. I guess before you can answer the question, uh, you have to understand the nature of uh, God. How do you understand that? Well, the standard thing would be to read a scripture. What will that do? Well, it will engage your thinking. It will make you think really, really deep about these questions. But it will not answer them because, well, some questions have no intellectual answer. And that's why going to, uh, to an intellectual <laughs> for this kind of answers will not help. I'm saying hello to various priests and pastors, etc., who are basically intellectuals repeating stale thoughts about various religious doctrines. Um, but there is a method, there are methods, how you can understand these things better. And they do exist in every tradition. Uh, you just need to have two things. One is desire to find this, these ways. And second, desire to practice them. And two and a half or three is to have an open mind because more likely than not, uh, whatever limited thinking one has had about these things will get well you might have to change that is always hard but the alternative is harder big blessings to everyone from whoever is up there in the sky bye